welcome each and every one of you to the City of Chelsea 2018 Veterans Ceremony. I'm grateful for each and every one of you for taking the time to, to come and help us commemorate our military service men and women who have sacrificed so, so much for so, so long for our great nation. We have a, a great program here uh, and, and some great speakers. So with that being said, we should always start uh, with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. So will you please join me? which is going to be done by Anthony Wayne Rocky. Correct. With the PAV. All right. Thank you. God bless us, everyone. Amen. I said that. Amen. I believe it's tiny tip. Yes. Uh, I just took a uh, trip to uh, Europe. I promised my grandmother when I was very young that I would take a trip some, someday to Europe. She never got to go back. I don't think she ever wanted to go back. Because I know for a fact she hid people and all that. And she might have been Jewish herself. That I can't find out. She left me a beautiful piece of jewelry, a Star of David. Well, that, that, that's not that important. Okay, I went to Poland, had a wonderful time, blah, blah, blah. My next tr uh, trip was to Germany. I hadn't been there in 64 years. I got on the train from Poland, went to Berlin, saw what was left, the memorial to the wall, but I have an original piece of reinforcement, leaving to my children. Uh, I went to Frankfurt. I'm 82 years old. My children said I would never make the trip, and also my wife of 60 years, which I'm very proud of. Uh, I'm in Frankfurt, and this woman comes along, big gal, uh, full of strength. You can see it with who's the matter. And she said to me, we're on a train. She helped me with my luggage. My wheel broke on my piece of luggage, one of the wheels, and was difficult to carry around. She said, so where are you going? I said, to lunch, too. She said, well, that's where I'm going. And she started telling me a little story. I said, well, oh, she was retired, a surgeon from the surveyor life, and she joined the government. And she immediately went over to Landstu Regional Hospital, where all the guys are coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan, okay? She said, well, when are you going to Landstu? I said, well, we acquainted with the town, you know, so long and all that. But that's not the important thing. I'm over there to uh, entertain the troops, re recuperate and all that. I said, I sing, I dance, I do magic. And trivia, I could talk for hours about all the wonderful people I have met, not only here in Chelsea, but everywhere. I'm proud of that. I'm proud that I was born in Chelsea. 
and I'll never forget the city, and I always come back. I always got the newspapers when I was overseas everywhere. I was in the airport for 21 years. Great life, loved it. Okay, let me get back to the fundamental. So she said, no, you're not gonna entertain. You're gonna sit there and hold these guys' hands. She says, have you seen the damage from battle? I said, yes, I have. When I was in Germany, I saw quite a bit of it. She said, well, then you'll be able to deal with it. I said, I sure would. So I went and I sat with, you know, mango bodies, whatever, you know, whatever was wrong with the guys and everything, and talk to them and tell them how much America loves you and we appreciate everything you're doing. So that, that made me feel pretty good. Which brings up to me, uh, I met a man in Salagas recently, we were talking. And, I, and he said to me, life is hard, I said, compared to what? Be grateful, no matter what your condition, uh, your lot in life, shall we say? That word lot, no, that's old speak. Um, we're all right. The alternative, do what we can. Show love and peace to everybody. Parents, talk to your children. I might be getting off the beaten path, but I'm dead serious because there is too much turmoil in our world. And if you pray, pray to your God, whoever he might be, and God bless you all. Thank you very much. Still going strong, and as long as I can breathe, I will do things, help people. I could, let me tell you this. I went to the VA the other day. I came into a little money due to the DAV, Disabled American Veteran. I created a near riot. I went into the uh, dining room area, uh, the canteen, whatever you want to call it, of the VA. And I start handing out hundred dollar bills. <laughs> I gave out, I don't know, like two thousand dollars. The cops were right for me and shoot to have and cover big money and whatever you could think about, yeah. It was quite an experience. I, I'm sure it was. And, and I'm gonna have to give you my phone number. <laughs> so, it's like Halloween, I didn't give out candy. It sounds like an official veteran's of My wife said my wife always says, it's all my money. Well, now she's complaining I'm giving it away. <laughs> <laughs> Not much, but try to help people. Hey, hey, hey. You know, every little bit counts, as they say. Well, thank you for that, one, uh, Anthony. Um, and sure. now we're going to take uh, the uh, National Anthem. And I'm very grateful to the Chelsea School. How you doing? Uh, Chelsea School Department for providing uh, and coordinating uh, the, the person who's going to do our national anthem. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to try and pronounce it as best as I can, so I apologize ahead. Samantha Irajeta. Irajeta? All right.
That was, that was exceptional. Thank you, Samantha. She'll, she'll be a, if she keeps singing like that, she'll be in Fenway no time. <laughs> sacrifice for our country. You know, uh, as uh, Councilor Robinson pointed out in the Governor's Proclamation, this is a special Veterans Day. It's the 100th anniversary of the signing of the armistice that ended World War I, and that led to the creation of uh, this day. And uh, it's also significant for Chelsea because we just celebrated a milestone, uh, a groundbreaking of a brand new $200 million a skilled nursing facility that will be built at the Soldiers Home site. 
Now they provide tremendous service at the soldier's <coughs> home for our veterans, for our aging veterans uh, in the existing facility, but this will be a state-of-the-art facility that will really ensure quality care for aging veterans and other veterans in need of skilled nursing services. And so we're very proud that that is going to occur here in Chelsea. And certainly, there are a lot of veterans in need of those kind of services. I, keep, I think tend to forget how many men and women are still serving right now in very dangerous war zones. The fact that places like Afghanistan and uh, Syria and even Iraq are no longer dominating the national nightly news, barely get a mention actually on our newscasts or in our newspapers, men and women of America are still serving by the thousands and thousands in these very dangerous areas. So uh, we certainly can never take this service for granted. I hope that they always remain in our prayers. But most importantly, we have to ensure that when they return home, they have the services that they deserve from government, and including from local government. I'm proud to say, at least, that I know that occurs here at the Chelsea Soldiers Home, thanks to the great work of Superintendent Poppy. And I'm also proud to say that they get great services here in the city of Chelsea proper, thanks to Francisco and his group of volunteers. So on behalf of the whole city, I just want to thank all the veterans here and watching for their tremendous service, assure you that you will always be in our prayer, and also assure you that veterans' services and veterans' needs will always be a priority for the city of Chelsea. So thank you and God bless you. wanted to add one thing, just to mention the, their uh, elected officials who joined us this morning, uh, State Representative Rosalie Vincent, <laughs> we already heard from City Council Leo Robinson, <laughs> we're joined by City Council Calvin Brown. joined by school committee member Richard Morosi. <laughs> so again, thank you. Enjoy the rest of the brief ceremony and then we'll have a nice one. Thank you. Okay, before we, we start with our guest speaker, I uh, just want to take an opportunity uh, to, to sort of express for me Besides the gratitude that, that, I, that I sincerely and deeply have for each and every one who's here today, uh, it's not about quantity, it's about quality. I know that when I was part of my unit, uh, the guy to your left and the guy to your right meant the world. You know, if something went down with your buddy, he would share very intimate letters, you know, about stuff that was going on at home, stuff that wasn't going so well. For anybody who's been in the service, we, we don't like Jody, okay? Uh, we don't like uh, home issues sometimes, but when I see each and every one of you here, you know, it represents, for this community, the guy on the left, the guy on the right, the people who care about our veterans and the ones who couldn't make it here today, who come many years in the past. Uh, one of the things that, that really uh, sort of put that light bulb on was when the city manager, uh, Tom, uh, mentioned Francisco and his volunteers. It's very difficult to do the amount of stuff that we have to do. And, and I beat myself up every day because I always feel like I could do more. But without the volunteers, uh, Keith, Kevin, Fawn, um, Roy, Anthony, Pam, Pam, who's not here, 
uh, but who was at the event last night and so many others. Uh, it would be close to impossible to get it done and without our partners in, in the legislature, um, such as uh, Rosalie Vincent, Representative Rosalie Vincent, um, Dan Ryan, uh, Salta Domenico, um, it, it, it would be literally impossible. So I, I am just so very grateful uh, for each and every one of you and the commitment you've shown. Those at home who couldn't come in today, we understand. Uh, but I'm grateful for, for those who are here and for those who are who have done so much to help me help the veterans of this community. And with that being said, uh, you know, for all of the, the, the veterans uh, who are fortunate to be here this year, um, I'd like to take just a brief uh, moment of silence for each and every one of our veterans who uh, couldn't make it because they are parted from, from, from where we are right now. Please. Thank you. And now I'd like to call up a, a, a Chelsea local uh, Chelsea veteran uh, with the Rotary Club, which is one of our other uh, tremendous partners in, in helping us uh, do uh, veterans events here in the city, veterans programming, Chamber of Commerce, and Chelsea Clock Company. Bruce Munch. about other people and I think the army when they learned that they had to serve side by side they found that uh, everybody is a person we are all people and it changed their misconceptions about the diversity you know you live in Chelsea and 
We nobody scares us. Nobody, nobody, we're not afraid of anybody because we're a very diverse community. We know know everybody. We know every type of person, race, whatever. And so it doesn't bother us. But I met people in the army who came from the south, etc., and they weren't exposed to diversity. And I think the army helped bring them a lot of awareness. They changed their whole attitude by the time they got through the service. Uh, things in the world have changed too. Us Vietnam veterans, when we came back, we weren't appreciated. We had a very hard time because people didn't like Vietnam veterans. I can remember uh, even up Wisconsin when there would be a veteran, a Vietnam veteran funeral service. Motorcycle gangs came to protect the cemetery from protesters because we couldn't even bury our veterans peacefully because there's so much protest and so much anger against the veterans. Today, it's so much nicer. You get free meals wherever you want today. People treat veterans, give us the respect that we are due for the sacrifices we make. Like I say, I had a, I had a nice period in the service. And Decent service, didn't get injured, didn't get wounded. Actually, no, none of my friends in the service, none of them, they were all fortunate. We all made it back home. That was my whole agenda when I got to Vietnam. I was coming home. I didn't partake in any uh, and the other act activities some took place. But uh, it just, you know, it was good to get home, but it was, the anguish was not good. It just wasn't appreciated. Now we're well appreciated. Uh, I hope a lot of you will be attending the Rotary Luncheon tomorrow. The Rotary Club is sponsoring a luncheon for all veterans. It's down at the Homeward Suites. Uh, but it's all part of the recognition that we now are receiving. The sacrifices we make, like I say, when I was drafted, my, job, my career was set already. I had a job established. I had people working for me. Two years later, when I came back, I was working for those same people. So even though I didn't suffer mentally or physically, you still suffer in your career because you gave your two life, two years or whatever years to the service. And so, like I say, it's now now that we're being recognized, it's good. Uh, I work at Chelsea Clock. Chelsea Clock, for those who don't know, is the for years and still is the major supplier of clocks for the U.S. Navy. If you served in the Navy, you had to feel at home every time you looked in your ship because there was a Chelsea clock telling you that's your home. And we still make we still make clocks for the U.S. Navy, but they buy the cheap ones now. They don't buy the good ones. They can't go buy them. Everybody's cutting back, but we do that. But the business community appreciates veterans. They're always looking for veterans to hire because veterans have given their time, and it's just a great great thing to do. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Just that, you know, it's great to be a veteran now versus what it was. And the country really recognizes it. So, uh, it's good.
uh, as we approach uh, sort of the, uh, the, the closing uh, part, I, I want to take an opportunity uh, first and foremost to, to just thank everyone. Uh, I want to thank, uh, you know, Rosalie, uh, Representative Rosalie Wilson. For, for being such a great veterans advocate uh, up there at the house, uh, we need more more legislators like that uh, that, that are willing to <laughs> She might not be the speaker of the house, but I guarantee you she's heard, um, and, and we're grateful to as a community to have uh, someone who cares about our veterans as much as she does. Um, our city councilors, uh, we have various who are veterans themselves. Uh, I remember uh, Leo um, and Ron at the uh, Care About Now meetings, and every now and then you'd hear them talking about their service. And, uh, they would kind of touch you and say, hey, I, you know, I want a part of that. You know, I, I want to be able to say someday that, that I did something other than just for myself, but for my country, and uh, I'm grateful to, to all of you who, who were in the community when I was younger. Um, and now it's our turn to sort of endear the next generation to sort of come in and, and let them know that we're gonna try and provide the best services possible. Uh, we've had some, some challenges in providing uh, services, but um, you know, people wanna talk about, oh, the casino and all oh, the, housing developments and all that. But um, I, to me, from my perspective, one of the, the greatest part is, not only is, is Massachusetts the best uh, veteran services of all 50 states, hand down, um, but having the Soldiers Home, uh, the partnership with Superintendent Cheryl Poppy in this city is kind of like, you know, here you got the country, here you got the best services, and here in the city of Chelsea, the main facility, 154 units of state-of-the-art, you know, telehealth, computer screen, camera, specialists from another state doing direct service. I mean, it, it doesn't get any better than that. You know, I'm not gonna throw out Star Trek and Star Wars or anything like that, <laughs> but it's about as close as, and, and best service that we could get for our veterans. And for me, it's, it's a source of pride. You know, I, I couldn't chip in too much. Uh, the project was a little bit out of my league. But um, I'm very grateful that from the legislature down to the city manager's office, uh, I've been so supportive. Um, other than that, I, I want to let you guys know, um, soon uh, the Department of Veteran Services um, is going to be moving to the library because uh, we're going to get all new offices, um, you know, I'm very happy and excited how uh, Tom, uh, once he, you know, understood the needs uh, of the department, uh, was so quick to, to really jump in and, and get the ball rolling and get that, getting that done. Um, after so many years, um, it, it's, it's great to have that level of support because, you know, sometimes you have outside of the office 50, 60 hour day, you know, weeks and you're doing work on Saturday and Sunday. I was at an event for the UMass Boston to recognize the Gold Star Mothers um, over by the seaport with Gus St. Silva. Um, and then yesterday, the Revere Veterans. Today, the Chelsea Veterans. Tomorrow, the Rotary Veterans. And before you know it, to, so when you invest that much, it, it's great to see that um, your leaders are, are being just as supportive. Um, and it makes it all so much worthwhile, so much more worthwhile. Um, and, I, and, and I'm very grateful. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Representative Rosalie. Thank you, our city councilors, our school committee, uh, all, all of you for, for being here. Um, and with that being said, of course, of course. And. Uh, Councilor Brown Thanks. would like to come up and say a few words. Thank you. Um, thank you, Francisco, for giving me the opportunity. Um, yesterday we were in church, and every um, Veterans Day we have a Veterans Day service. 
So um, our pastor, Bishop Robert G. Brown, asked one of our um, disciples at the church to write a poem on Veterans Day. So I just was here as a father, um, as a son of a veteran, as a brother of a veteran. I wanted to just share a few words. So um, thank you again, um, Francisco, for giving me the opportunity to read this poem, which was um, written by one of our disciples at Zion Church Ministry. A day to honor who of all served in peace, time, and wartime. A way to give thanks to all them that have made this day a better day for us. For giving so much more, we pray God bless America and we hope for the best. But our service men and women are the reason we are blessed. Army and Navy, Air Force, Marines serve to our country. It's more than it seems. Through all of their training and the rigid tests, each one is determined to strive to do their best. Many wars have shattered all the peace and brought the world a much pain. But our military troops restored the peace again. Through blood battles, they answered the call to fight for freedom and gave it their all. Families waited back in the States to hear words of their sons and daughters some came back home, others did not. But the, the fell to the enemy gun. The sadness, per the sadness permeates us in the air when our brave persons fell, who promised to defend the flag. To this day, they still call. Again, all enemies, they said to, I will protect this land, obeying their orders to the end. But God Almighty had his hand. One day a year is not enough to properly convey the love and the gratitude we share to all you veterans today. Happy Veterans Day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Brown, um, <coughs> for uh, sharing that with us. I want much ado, I, I can't sincerely say enough how, how thankful I am for each and every person here. Uh, just remember that soon the, the office will be moving, so if you're looking for me, I believe I'm going to be in the library for a few months. <laughs> Don't say, oh, the veteran agent is, in, is never there for four months. I'm in another location just because we're improving, uh, and Tom has been a huge advocate of improving services across the board for the city. Um, and I'm grateful to be part of that uh, blessing. Uh, and I think that's good. I want to thank Sabor Especial Restaurant, which is at 83 William Street, for the food. And we have uh, La Chula Restaurant, which is a new uh, restaurant here in the community. Um, and they provided some wonderful food as well. And then we have one of our fellow veterans, Roberto Cepeda who has donated what looks like some very tasty flan, although I might, I can only have so much. I will enjoy that so much, very much. Thank you, everyone. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Woo. We gotta, we're gonna reverse, okay? We're gonna get the shit back at the duck. Just a quick second. Um, another one of our great uh, veteran advocates, uh, and I will be, so amiss not to mention our Senator Sandra Domenico. Please come up. to say thank you to our veterans. There isn't really a, a group of people in the entire country or around the world that has done so much for so many people in the U.S. veteran. You go in harm's way every single day, making sure that our country and our, our world is safe. And I, I mentioned this at my previous event. I want to just talk a little bit about my grandfather. My grandfather has many veterans uh, served in World War II. He fought for 100 straight days in battle. He didn't know if he was coming home, didn't know when the battle was going to stop, 
didn't know what he was going to find around the corner. He fought in Europe for 100 straight days. Came home like most veterans do and did not talk about his time in the military. Did not talk about what he experienced, not even telling his own, own wife and his own children what he saw. When we wanted to bring him back to Italy for a vacation, decades later, he said, I'm all done with that. I've seen it, I've been there, I'm good. And at his funeral, one of his friends who served with him in the military told us a lot of reasons why he never spoke about it. When he was storming uh, one of the beaches in France, he was running up to his target with two of his friends on either side. And as they were running towards their target to, with their mission, his two friends on either side of him were shot and killed. And he had to keep moving because his job was to get to that target. And his two friends on either side of him did not make it that day. And that lived with him the rest of his life. And we saw pictures of the destruction that he took, which we never saw until after he passed away. But he saw that destruction, he saw the cities crumble. He saw people in the worst possible position that they've experienced in their lives. And just seeing that, that in front of you, that has to have a lasting impact on you. Now our state is the number one state in the entire country. We are very proud of that. Very proud of that. But I am also aware that even though the mission of these veterans has been completed, our mission as legislators is not. Because we still have homelessness in our state, in our country veterans. We still have veterans who cannot find homes, who have drug addictions, who are experiencing trauma, mental health issues, unemployed. So even though we have a great state who supports our veterans, we can do more. And we should do more. So I want to thank all the veterans for being here, for all that you've done in your families who have lived with you as well. The veterans' families is a tremendous amount of sacrifice for you as well, for your families and your friends and people that have experienced this with you. And like my grandmother and my, my mother and, and my aunts and uncles, living with someone who experienced all of that is a tremendous, it's a lot of pride, obviously, but obviously not knowing what is in that person's head is also tough for those family members as well. So thank you very much for all that you do. Happy Veterans Day, and let's support veterans not just today, not just recognize them today, but all year long as well. Thank you very much. Thank you again. Please enjoy.